I was born and raised in southeast Missouri, mm. but I lived in Illinois when my children were born. And then we moved to Virginia, and then my husband went international, so we were in Egypt for eight years, and then we oh. came back to the peninsula to live. For a woman, it was challenging in mm. that uh, Muslim country, a third world country, and we stayed eight years. Every stay was two or two and a half. So one of the most challenging things for me was you made friends, and this was from our youngest daughter was with us uh, from eighth grade through high school, and it was all age groups. You made friends, and they left, and you were still there, and so you had to make friends again, mm -hmm. and they left, and then you made friends again. <laughs> I know I packed the Christmas items, Christmas of 1983. Just sure we would come on in 1984, and that didn't happen. So when I packed those Christmas things in 1984, I packed them carefully again, and we did come home in 1985. And I was happy to come back to the United States, although our company was very generous with R&R, &R, rest and relaxation, I guess. and so. I was raised, um, it was a country setting really. Town was maybe 150 people. We lived in the suburbs. My nieces and nephews get a kick out when I say that. Mm -hmm. But um, I was very privileged and blessed to travel widely when I lived there. Lots of different countries, all of which makes you appreciate life in the United States. I can relate a couple of things to you. Women had no rights. and. We were expatriate women, but that didn't give us any rights. And I went one day to the open air market and I put some tomatoes in a bag. And when I gave them to the fellow to weigh, he just turned the bag upside down and dumped them out. I you know that's like, how did I offend this man? You, you feel this big and you just sort of slink off. And then one day, uh, they didn't have large grocery stores like you think. It was a small grocery store, had two entrances, and we only got meat, uh, like on Friday. And at the stores, they hung the carcass up, you know, and sliced off. So I went in the store in the back door, and the man was chopping veal chops, and one landed in the floor, and the cat got it, and he kicked the cat and, and grabbed the veal chop and put it in with the rest that he was doing. I knew I saw him, and I knew that he knew Sue, and I thought, I can't stay in this store, so I just went through the aisles and went out and went to my car and <laughs> laughed and laughed. I thought somebody's getting really good veal chops. It was a difficult place to live, and yet uh, one of the American women said to me one day, Lois, do you know why it's so difficult to, for the American woman to live here? And I said, well, yeah, I can think of a few reasons. She said, because in the United States, we can pick up the telephone. We're so independent, we can accomplish almost anything picking up the telephone. Well, we had a telephone. We were uh, third floor for five years, and we moved to a villa. But uh, they seldom ever worked, and you might wait an hour or two and never get a dial tone. You had to go, like, to a friend. And maybe you had to walk two or three flights of steps. They didn't have a phone. They weren't home, so you left a note and you went back home. So sometimes the communication was a problem. Well, extra effort on your part. But it was interesting that the friends that I made, I'm still in touch with several of those. And I came back stateside 1985. And uh, it was a closeness because it was like you were all in this ship and this ship was sinking some days. Some days were so hard.